So yeah, the first talk is by Karan Sings, and it's called, <laughs> I like the title very much, it's called How to Secure Your Microservices Running on Kubernetes Without Losing Your Mind. <laughs> okay, yeah, so enjoy people. I'm Karan Singh, and welcome to NeosCon 2022. In this talk, we're going to talk about how can you secure your microservices running on OpenShift or Kubernetes using Keycloak, which is an open source identity and access management solution. So I work for Red Hat and as a senior principal architect and developer evangelist. I blogs at Medium, so you can follow my blog. And if you can also follow me on LinkedIn, if you want to know more about cloud native, Kubernetes and distributed system designs. I think we all agree that Kubernetes is the de facto standard for uh, container orchestration, right? It's been uh, more than more than eight years now uh, since Kubernetes uh, first launched. Uh, Kubernetes is everywhere. I like Kubernetes and uh, it's great, right? And so as microservices, microservices are great too and they are everywhere. They are ubiquitous and uh, microservices is a not, not a new concept. It has been there since last more than two decades in very different ways and forms uh, but the idea was simple right so you we would be running you know we, or if you're a developer if you're a, an architect you would be managing uh, a lot of microservices on your environments right and if you're smart you would be deploying and managing your microservices on kubernetes because kubernetes provides a very nice way for uh, for containerization orchestration and uh, each microservice can have their its own container and you know it can be easily managed by kubernetes right so uh, it provides a very nice way to uh, to do it so And now if you have a lot of microservices, a lot of business applications all in the form of microservices running on uh, Kubernetes or maybe not on Kubernetes, you know, one fundamental problem that every developer and architect will get is like authentication and authorization between your microservices, between or maybe for your external users, how they can authenticate and start using the services, how your microservices into microservice communication can get, you know, authenticated and validated. Or if you are building a system which would be open for third party access over APIs, you need to have a way, you need to have a standard way for authentication and authorization, standard and a scalable way to do it, right? So that is very difficult. So as a, as a comparison, as a developer, you do not go and build your own database right from scratch from from ground up you typically go and pick up my mysql mongodb postgres postgresql and start using your database plug in your application with a database and start writing to it right in a similar way you do not need to reinvent authentication and authorization for your business for your authentication you can plug into already provided solutions which is very fast for you to, to do and they are more feature rich and they are more secure now Think about, this is one example of a e-commerce based microservices app where you have email service, ad service, checkout, shipping, currency, and you know, product catalog recommendation. Imagine if you have, you know, a dozen of these services that you need to manage, that you need to deploy, and uh, you need to set up authentication and authorization for, a life would be very, very hectic, right? So there has to be a smart way to, to offload authentication and authorization of your business. Right, and here comes Keycloak. Keycloak will be your rescue ranger. Keycloak is an open source identity and access management solution which supports single sign-on, lots of social login, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, or or GitHub, or even your your corporate uh, you know authentication mechanisms like you know LDAP or Active Directory. You can integrate that with your apps. Uh, it supports SAML2 and and you know OpenID Connect, uh, OAuth2 uh, standard protocols. For this you can hook up your own your your standard you know database relational database as your as your as a federated user for it uh, you can also configure uh, fine-grained authentication uh, authorization services for your uh, uh, for your system like role-based access control or user-based access control uh, along the same lines so keycloak is an open source uh, it's a community project uh, if you're interested, Red Hat provides an enterprise version of Keycloak called as Red Hat SSO, which comes with uh, with Red Hat support. 
So key clock is great. And uh, uh, in this talk, we're going to talk about key clock and see how this works. Uh, all right. So as I mentioned before, key clock, you can kind of offload your authentication on authorization logics to key clock and key clock will, you know, be your authentication layer for your users, for your inter API uh, communication using open ID connect and SAML to do the verification, do the role based access control and lots of other things. But before we go into the, the demo part, let us understand or, or let, let me walk you through a, a basic, a basic token based security workflow like a 101, how a token based uh, workflow look like uh, for a microservices app or, uh, or, you know, in general. So setting the stage here, orientation, these are the actors that we're gonna, gonna participate in our workflow. We have a user who will kind of request for the resource. Uh, we have a browser, we have a computer, we have a browser, which is a client application. And then we have an identity provider. It is key clock in this case, which will act as an authentication as well as an authorization server. And then we have backend server services. Uh, we have an API gateway where all the requests will come. And then we have multiple microservices. So this is our, these are the actors that they're going to uh, participate. So step number one. The user says, hey, I want to go to online store.com slash buy.html and I need to buy a product. So he will kind of open up this uh, this uh, this URL on a browser and, you know, the system will will redirect the user to um, uh, to identity provider. Hey, this user wants to open up this uh, this web page. What should I do? So the auth server key clock will say, hey, I don't know who this user is. So they first need to log in. So a uh, key clock will present a login screen to the user. Now you can configure that, that uh, you want uh, a key clock provided login screen, which is by default, you just need to enable one, one, you know, drop down, like, hey, enable social logins or enable login page. The user will get a default login page from key clock. So you don't need to code that. So life would be very easy with that. The user will, will get a prompt like, hey, login. Depending upon uh, how you configure it, you could enable social logins that user will see Google, Facebook, or maybe Apple or Google or whatever, GitHub, a login, login buttons on the, on the login page. The user can select any button as they like. And then, or maybe they can submit a username and password uh, to, uh, to SSO, to a key clock. And the key clock will then uh, authenticate the user. If the user authentication is successful, the user, uh, the key clock will return back uh, to the application like, hey, you know, this was, this was, this worked. I mean, it's an, it's an authenticated user. So here is your auth code or access code. The key, uh, the application will then kind of use this auth code, which is kind of a, think about it's a, it's a key clock ticket, like, hey, uh, whenever you go to a, a deposit some item in your in a in a repository uh, uh, in a in a place you will get a get a key clock ticket right so lock room uh, key clock ticket right um, so yeah the application will then you know use this uh, uh, access code uh, and get a bearer token again from the key clock server like hey this is the access code give me a bearer token so the key clock will provide a bearer token uh to uh to the application with its with an expiry so each weird token will have an expiry to as attached to it you can set the expiration time time window by default i think it is five minutes if i if i am correct um but yeah so application will get a beer token from the key clock server and then key clock uh, uh, could optionally go and request for more metadata from uh, from the key clock server about the user like hey tell me more about this user what's his mobile number what's his uh, uh, what's his uh, you know region or maybe what's his what are his preferences profile preferences so you can store this information onto key clock and key clock will then provide you you know uh, uh, user information which is an optional uh, back to the application you can write business logics based on the based on the type of the user that uh, who just tried to log into your application and then using that uh, uh, beer token, uh, the application will go and connect to the, the API servers like, hey, I want to go and buy this token, uh, uh, this, this item, and here is my authentication beer token. So now, do not trust anyone. That's the, uh, that's the magic for security, right? So the API server will not trust by default this application. It will go and uh, very validate the the bearer token from the identity provider like hey i've got this bearer token from an application is it legitimate 
So the uh, the identity provider will do the verification. Then we you know it will respond back to the API server. Like yes, you know what we have provided. We have I have given this token to this uh, application. It's legitimate. Please let him in. So then you know the API gateway will forward that request to the backend service. You know process the business logic, buy the item for the for the uh, as the request by the user. The the backend service will uh, will send a success matches message to the to the gateway. Uh, it will send success message to the application to the browser and back to the user. So this is how a standard token based uh, uh, bearer token based workflow look like uh, 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 for a microservice application. There could be other ways also uh, that could be uh, other different flows as well. But uh, just to keep things simple, I uh, I you know uh, help you understand this flow how this looks like. So having said that, um, let us now go and do some actual hands-on. So in this in this demo, we're gonna use OpenShift, which is Kubernetes. Uh, it's an open so uh, um, it's an enterprise version and uh, enterprise distribution of Kubernetes from Red Hat. We're gonna use key clock operator. Uh, we'll install key clock operator then we, we will uh, go and deploy uh, uh, go and use our three microservices and uh, uh, these microservices will then you know talk to key clock and uh, and get the authentication and authorization done from key clock okay now it's show time let us go and and see uh, this in in real life i'm gonna switch to my my browser here uh, where we have this is my OpenShift console. So those who are not familiar, OpenShift gives you a, a very nice user interface through which you can you know you can manage your system, you can manage your nodes, you can manage almost everything in in, in OpenShift and Kubernetes. So I right now I'm into my default project. I, I'm going go and select default project. I can go to operator hub and go. It's it's the catalog. It's it's, it's the catalog of all the operators available for Red Hat. Red Hat, from Red Hat, from Community, as well as from the ISV partners that we have, you can go and look for Key Cloak. Key Cloak. Uh, yes, so we're gonna use Community Operator Key Cloak here. Uh, I'll continue to this warning, and we're gonna use the latest version of uh, seventeen o one, and we're gonna install it. Uh, yes, we're gonna install this in the default namespace, and then uh, I'll hit install. So. It, it is this simple installing key clock on your OpenShift environment is this simple it's just few clicks it will give you a, a, a standard default key clock environment in your um in your uh, yeah in your environment basically so this time this might take a few minutes now let us go and see the workflow uh, okay so key clock update is trying to run uh, it's coming up all right, so the key clock operator is, has been successfully installed onto our OpenShift cluster. Next, we're going to go and uh, and create an instance of uh, of key clock. So I'll click on this, and then create a key clock instance. And maybe we will uh, we will kind of rename our our instance like Neos Key Clock, right? And then I'll go and select the default configuration. There are a lot of things that you can set in key clock. Um, but yeah, so this will kind of set up a default key clock environment. I'll go and look into the pods. Uh, all right, so key clock instance is setting up a, a database PostgreSQL, initializing the key clock pod, and uh, it should be up and running in a few minutes. So meanwhile, this is coming up. I already had installed key clock in a, a different namespace called as key clock namespace, um, and this is up and running. And we're gonna use this as our uh, as our key clock uh, environment right so up next is uh, we're going to use a, a go clock which is a, a a key clock client for golang um, so it provides you all the basic uh, functionality that or kind of an api functionality that you would you would need to to interact with the key clock server it's pretty rich uh, from the feature point of view so we're going to kind of use this uh, library as our as our key clock client for Golang, and uh, the entire code that I, I'm going to show you next is uh, is provided in this repository. We're gonna share this the link to these repositories uh, uh, to you as well. Okay, let us now switch to uh, the VS Code editor and walk. I'll walk you through uh, the code base that we're gonna use. So, if you're familiar with Golang, 
uh, this is the main.go file, the first file that we have. We're gonna use, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm using a frame, framework called as Jin, uh, Jin Gonic, uh, a Jin framework from from Go, which kind of helps you to write some, uh, you know, nice uh, microservices on, on in Golang. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through this section here. So uh, I'm initializing, uh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm already also using a go.env package. Uh, for reading the environment variables um, it's just an initialization of, of that and then uh, you know uh, uh, we are just initializing goal uh, Gingonic and uh, initializing some routes and our app gonna run on 8081 localhost 8081 so I'm gonna show you uh, env file as well so the env file uh, uh, looks like this uh, we have this key clock host name we uh, we have the key clock client uh, and you know secrets and realm and username and password so once the server is up uh, i'm going to show you how you can also create these things i think let's go in and validate if uh, our key clock instance in uh, in the default namespace is up and running i think it should be okay there's some failure here let me see what does the lock say Ah, uh -uh, permission denied. Okay, so I think I need to fix a few things here. So PostgreSQL database is not able to come up because some permission issues, which I'm gonna go and uh, and try out later, not today. All right. So next, I'm gonna show you how you can uh, create and configure key clock. So to do that, we'll first of all go uh, into a networking and routes and open up the key clock uh, dashboard from here and uh, we will log into administrative console and for which we need to provide credentials so i'm gonna go and uh, connect to my uh, my openshift cluster and oc uh, project So this will this should tell us yes i'm on my key on my uh, on on the key clock project and next i'm gonna go is oc get secret um secret minus and key clock is my namespace and the secret name and then uh, and the password uh, for this uh, key clock instance and which can also go and grab the user which is admin is it user or username i think it's username that's username okay what did yeah, username all right so and since i know the username is admin i'm going to copy the password here go back to my um, console admin and this will kind of help us with uh, with this so i i already have set up a, a name a kind of a domain or realm called as dev i'm going to add a new one just to show you how this looks like so maybe neos so we're going to set up a, a realm here a realm is kind of a namespace uh, for for key clock so once we set up the realm we're going to go and set up register a client we're going to create a new client and client is uh, client provides us the credentials right so uh, the web client neos okay open id connect and then we'll create this so the so there are a lot of information a lot of configuration options available in key cloud that you can uh, go and play with but uh, for now we will kind of change the access token to let's say confidential and um, and then we need to set up a redirect url as well so that uh, once authentication is done we have to redirect so http for now we're gonna put like localhost ad81 slash you know success it's just a dummy one that i'm adding so i'll save this so this will kind of give me a credentials tab it will open up a credential so this so this is a secret that we need to use while uh, using go clock or within our application right so we're going to use these uh, this is the secret that we're gonna use so coming back to my term uh, my here so this is the client id that uh, you know we created that neos neos client and the secret and then uh, the realm is neos that we have created and then we're gonna use and create uh, a username and password right 
just so that we can uh, we can validate you can al always hook up with uh, with third party services social services but for now we'll create a user let's say username is user1 and uh, we'll set this up later on i'll save this and then uh, in credentials i'm gonna you know set a password for the user user1 uh, user1 user1 okay so the user is now created for in, in key clock so so this is the environment variable so the host name is the uh, the actual key clock dashboard or kind of the the admin console okay so we have we have just created all of these information so that you guys know what i'm what i'm doing next as for the code base we're gonna go and and go into the initialize route method which is here defined here so here we're gonna initialize you know a couple of um, a couple of uh, routes one is the unauthenticated route like login and health just for for demoing this thing then we uh we also have a login web i'm going to show you that later on it's an authenticated log then we have this uh, authenticated log which is on the, on the router group slash auth so any url path like slash auth slash code slash auth slash status would be my authenticated route these are secure routes these are authenticated and i want you know authentication authorization happen to these these uh, these routes so we have these three routes defined in here and uh, next is uh, we are using this uh, this middleware called as uh, validate token and you know token revoke so we're going to use these middlewares uh, to pre-process the uh, the method let us go and understand middle middleware here so um, yeah so this one is the uh, the first method called as validate token which is simply you know kind of validate our our token so whatever uh, be it token that we're getting from the application it will go and verify that if uh, if there is a problem in uh, in it it will kind of throw the throw the error to the user okay um all right so once the initial verification is done it will go and send a request to this method called as key clock retrospect token which is a key clock uh, which is a go clock uh, method that we have used which is implemented in another file called as key clock right so let us go and walk through this key clock which is the main file uh, for for this uh, for the context of this presentation so we're going to use key go clock which is a, a package and um, then we're going to define some some credentials so so this is kind of coming up from the environment file that we're going to use uh, yep we are just picking up from the environment file so that we can set up a connection um this is key clock login client so this is the first method which will uh, log in into the application using the credential that we will provide for the user one create a new client and then you know uh, set the context and then you know use this method called as key clock uh, client dot login and provide the context and client id secret id rel and you know username and password so this and in all information would be then submitted to go clock library and then go clock library will go and uh, connect to the uh, to the key clock backend service that we have set up and then validate the token or log in the user okay the next method is uh, uh, rest retrospect token which is kind of validating the the period token that we have so again you know setting up the initial client and you know submitting uh, submitting the request back to the called calling the retrospect token method providing the the required parameters here again the request will go to uh, go clock go clock will kind of send this request to key clock server access token client id secret and realm and that will validate and verify that the token that we have provided is still valid if it is not valid then it will kind of throw like hey token is inactive okay and finally the method that we have that i've implemented is revoke on in uh, let's suppose a user logs out we need to revoke his uh, his token okay so if the let's suppose if the user calls a log or log out uh, route it will kind of validate and it will kind of re, uh, took it will remove and it will kind of log out from the application so it will it will log out uh, from the application it's the code for for the log out and uh, finally checking out the controller where i have uh, i have set up you know the login flow okay what will happen if this uh, authentication is successful authorization successful the user will kind of print some messages right like a uh, uh, successful login successful or, or failed okay then logout method a user is logged out and then there's a health method like it's very dummy at the moment but it just print out the messages 
uh, status and then quote and then quote will kind of go if the user uh, authentication is successful it will go and hit another uh, third party url or api and get a joke or not a joke uh, get a quote from there only if the user is authenticated so this is the flow that we're gonna try out next before we do it let us now run and execute uh, our golang app uh, so view uh, where's terminal terminal and then clear this up clear so i'm using uh, this uh, air utility which kind of hot reloads my my app so it's now up and running let us go uh, and uh, set up the terminal or the client hold on where's my client okay what if no, no, no it's not the one uh, okay Thun, thundra client okay so this is my my http client i'm gonna close this so that um, my i have room to show you the client okay first of all let's go and check the the health of our application okay which is an unauthenticated route so it is uh it's not using any any slash auth which is unauthenticated i'm gonna go and and hit this i think it's too bigger let me reduce the size i think hopefully it should be it should be good now so let us now hit this uh, api and and boom yes look at this one we have got http 200 and uh, we've got a okay response from our unauthenticated route called a slash health okay so which means the application works let us also go and try to hit the quote quote app or or the quote microservice for that sake and if i run this at the moment it will throw an error hey invalid token because the token is already expired or whatever token is already presented there so as a user i need to first go and log in so i'll go, I'll go and, and run the login route here and in the body in the body we will provide the credentials for the user like user one and user one so let me go and and uh, type incorrect password here just so that you know this uh, to test it out if uh, this works so if i hit this i got a 401 like hey unauth unauthorized user invalid user credentials right so this message is coming from key clock you don't need to as a developer you don't need to implement these messages right so it saves a lot of development cycle so let us go this time we will provide the correct credential for for the user and in response we should be getting the token right as we've seen in the flow okay good so we have got an access token and we have got http 200 response so it gives me an access token a refresh token and then a status login successful okay next we're gonna kind of use this uh, access token to do further authentication for other services okay so let us go and and check out the auth service okay so now this is an authenticated route you can see there is a prefix called as auth under this if i run this right now it will fail because it's invalid token because and i need to go to auth and uh, add the bearer token here so if i do this right if i kind of add any random token and try to run this it will throw an error because of the validation in the middleware that we have implemented okay now let us put a real token that we have that i've copied from the last command from the login output so this is the real bearer token that we have got from the login service right so let us go and authenticate okay processing and http 200 which is state is okay which means this validation was successful and i was able to successfully call my status api let us go and try quote this time because quote will go and talk to a microservice or an external service from outside i'll go to auth i'll update the right token here and i will hit so this will go to key clock and then if it is successful it will go to internet get the quote and come back right so that that what just happened so the flow goes like this it will go and validate with the key clock validate the token the token was successful it went to the internet and you know fetched a new quote for us or oh, let me do it once again like i right it's free <laughs> so um, we can kind of run as many times as we want because you know uh how can you have a war on terrorism oh uh, yeah i mean no war please i i'm, I'm a fan of no war so okay uh coming back to here uh we have what we have seen so far is we have 
we have seen the health route which is unauthenticated we have seen a login route which uh, through which we have provided credential we have provided incorrect credential then we provided correct credential got the token i have we have supplied the token into the status api and then all was everything was working let us now try the last part which is logout as a user i want to log out from the microservice or from this right so currently my uh, as you can see from the code my my token is valid i want to devalidate or uh, not devalidate i i want to kind of you know revoke the token so i'll provide the token i will submit and then status user is logged out now this token is no longer valid we can verify this go to code again and and see it's the same token and try to run this it will say hey invalid token because the token has been forcefully deactivated right just to show you once again we're gonna go grab a new token from the login api copy this okay i have not copied this correctly copy this put this into a uh, quote update the bearer token details run and this will work right so i think you're following me here what we have done is we have used key clock as our main authentication and authorization layer as a developer i have not written you know huge code for doing managing my own authentication and authorization we have just hooked into key clock using the credentials and using the endpoint that i've showed you earlier i'm going to close this right uh, we have we have used this uh, these these things from key clock and we have deferred all our authentication and authorization to key clock right this is an example for golang you can literally go and use any language of your choice java quarkus or, or you know dot, dot net or node.js or you know rust whatever you like it's just an implementation you can go and figure out uh, you can go and check out the respective uh, documentation of those clients key clock clients there are available in all major languages you as a developer you just need to implement the logic in your code right like like this one hey authentication authorization and those kind of stuff so it saves a lot of time and this is how you can simply manage your microservices security in the in the era of cloud native in the era of uh, of you know kubernetes right okay so uh, so that's all i have for the demo today uh, we're going to provide you the link to the repository so that you guys can play around and um, this is my open ship environment you, uh, if you're interested uh, i think i'll also have a last slide here so uh, i'm going to give you these these links uh, the links to this uh, repository uh, if you're interested to get your yeah, get a free open shift cluster for you to practice you can you can head out to uh, developers.reddit.com so this is kind of managed by my team <coughs> it's a pretty interesting website developers.com if you're a developer if you're if you're a you know operator there are a lot of these great free resources available for you to kind of learn the things right so i recommend you to go and check out developer sandbox which provides you a free open shift environment for you to practice out no charges you just need to create an account and just launch your open shift dev sandbox and you will go you will get something like this right it's a full blown open shift ui that you will get uh, uh, which will also comes with its own uh, developer console Okay, you can skip the tour or i can skip the tour because i know this uh so as a developer you can you can literally go and and use a lot of uh, good stuff from developers.com and openshift all right guys so this is all i have for for the day and um, i hope this was useful to you and uh, thank you so much for listening to me thank you so much for watching this uh, this talk and enjoy the rest of the conference have a nice day bye Thanks very much to Karan Singh for his in-depth uh, talk about uh, Kubernetes and authentication in Kubernetes. Uh, that was very hands-on and very detailed, I think. Uh, yeah. So, and even if he's not here in person, thanks for the applause anyway. Yeah, and if you have any questions, uh, as said before, he's actually not remotely available. But if you guys have anything you want to ask him, just post them, and we'll try to get back to him. And uh, after that, personally to you to give him his answer, uh, your his, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, confused by all this authentication processes, and yeah. Do you guys uh, use uh, Kubernetes in this detail or?
Um, yeah, I've been in touch a bit uh, with it the last two years, but actually we don't authenticate anything because it's all internal stuff. But yeah, it was interesting anyway. Mm -hmm. I think Flow Native uses it in, in the beach hosting system, as oh I yeah. heard. I've heard about mm -hmm. this as well. Yeah, and so this was the last talk uh, before lunch on the studio stage.